Last Wednesday, we started a three-week study on the topic, the value of friendship. The Apostle Paul had friends that he spoke of in his writings, and among them, two of his closest friends were Timothy and Epaphroditus. Paul had a strong bond with both of these men, and in Philippians chapter 2, he gives us a glimpse of what a true friendship is, and in that passage, he actually lists three qualities of a true friend. Last week, we opened uh, by sharing the first quality of a true friend is presence. And in our passage, we learned that Timothy and Epaphroditus were there with Paul, and Paul was in jail. And there's a good chance that the emperor, Nero, was going to have Paul executed. So it's also a distinct possibility that those who were Paul's friends would be at risk as well. So because of this, we can be sure that many people stayed away from Paul. So that's why the idea of presence was so important to friendship. Friends are the people who are there when no others are. When the crowd dies down after a crisis, your friends are the ones who are still active and still involved in your life. When others could not or would not travel to be with Paul, Epaphroditus finds himself by Paul's side. Both men were dear to Paul because they were by his side helping in the work and helping him personally. Today I want to share the second quality of a true friend, and that quality is simply sacrifice. A characteristic of friendship in both Timothy and Epaphroditus, and it was their willingness to sacrifice. So there's a great value when you have friends like these. And first of all, I would say this. These kind of friends will give of themselves. In verses 22 through 24, Paul says this. But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with the father he has served me in the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him just as soon as I see how it will go with me, and I trust in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. And then Paul says in verse 25 that Epaphroditus, he's a, a fellow worker, a fellow in, in ministry, and he served beside Paul. So Timothy, Timothy here gave of himself. He volunteered to take this letter to the church in Philippi when no one else was willing to do the job. So what did that mean? It meant time away from home. It, it would take many weeks to travel to Philippi in those days. So that would also not only mean time away from home, but an inconvenience. And travel at times could be quite dangerous. So there was danger involved. As Epaphroditus came to be with Paul, Timothy was willing to serve Paul by going to the Philippians. A friend will do what they can do for you. They'll give of their time and their resources. They'll give of their energy. A, a friend isn't afraid to get involved in your life. The, this kind of a friend will roll up their sleeves and help. So friends like these also give no fault of no no thought, excuse me, no thought of themselves. In verse 29, Paul says this about Epaphroditus. Receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men. Listen to this. For he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. Interestingly enough, in his commentary, William Barclay gives some pretty good insight when it comes to what Epaphroditus gave. He says this, The Greek word for risked his life is a gambler's word, and it means you stake everything on the turn of the dice. So what Paul is saying here is that for the sake of Jesus Christ, Epaphroditus gambled his life. I'll use that phrase in this statement. The people in the early church were willing to gamble their lives to help others. Think about it. Isn't that a picture of what true discipleship is? True disciples will willingly put it all on the line for Christ. And in a similar way, we put it all on the line for our friends. That's what Timothy and Epaphroditus had in common. In verse 20, Timothy, Paul says that uh, he said he genuinely was concerned for their welfare. And in verse 30, we just read that Epaphroditus nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking. We can't be a good friend if we're only looking out for our own interests. Friendship is not about me or it's not about you. It's about our relationship to and with our other friends. Friendship obviously will sometimes be inconvenient. It may even be unpopular, and it will be difficult. These men, in this passage, they weren't looking out for their own needs. 
They weren't with Paul out of some warped desire to gain notoriety. They weren't concerned about what happened to themselves. No, they were actually serving the Lord first, and then in their service to the Lord, they served Paul. They gave their time, they gave of their means, their substance, and they gave of their energy. Reminds me of a gripping story told of two friends that were fighting side by side in, in the battlefield. The combat was fierce, and many of the men in their unit were dying. One of the friends was wounded, and he couldn't get back to the trenches where they had found themselves. So his other friend, in the middle of the crossfire, went out to get him. He went against the superior officer's orders. He found his friend terribly wounded, and he picked him up, and when he finally returned to safety, his friend was dead. His superior officer came up to him and saw that the soldier had died, and he said, it wasn't worth it. But the soldier who brought back his friend replied, Oh, but it was, sir. When I reached my friend, he looked at me and said, I knew you'd come. Listen, you don't get true friends because of the car you drive or the money you have. Sure, you can get people to hang out with you because of what you have or what you look like or, or your influence or even because of what you do. But when somebody has something better, those kind of friends will be gone. A solid friendship is built on relationship, not superficial things. A good friend is not there because of what they can get from you. They're, beca they're there because of what you mean to them. And they will gladly give of themselves for you. Which reminds me of what Jesus said in John 15. Greater love has no one than this, than someone lay down his life for his friends. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the friendships that you've enabled us to enjoy in life. Thank you for those that we know truly are friends, much like Timothy and Epaphroditus were to Paul. I pray that you will guide us in our lives to be the godly example, to be the godly friends that you so desire in us so that we can encourage one another in the faith and see the gospel of Jesus Christ go out from among us. Thank you for this passage. Thank you for the reminder that friendship includes sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen.